remember if there's anybody. Um, here, I'll have to come back and mess with it again later, but yeah, we'll, there we go, good enough. So um, I'm James Cook, and um, you know this is uh, pre-calculus pre algebra, which means that most of you intend to uh, take what uh, calculus after this, right? And I, I think we have a course in trigonometry you're also supposed to take before calculus, right? Is that right? You're like somebody told me to come here. I'm just here, right? Don't don't ask me about the structure of the math curriculum here. You're the math professor, right? It is hot in here, isn't it? Yeah, I was sweating in my office. Like, I'm not sure what's going on. It was cooler yesterday. Um, maybe we'll get a fan or something. I don't know. Um, so, um, just to let you know who I am, I'm I'm James Cook. I've just started teaching here. You're one of my like, I think you're us here. One, two, three, fourth class I've taught, I think, maybe fifth, I forget. Um, and uh, so we'll be in this room Tuesday, Thursday, 12.30 to, uh, what? Yeah, that's right, 12.30 to 1.45. Um, my email is jcook, all right, UWA. I have office hours. My office is actually in the back of this room from 10 to uh, noon, Monday through Friday. If you do come to my office hours and like, it's one of the times there's another class in here, just like the back door connects to the, ma the math lab, which is on like the other wall. So that's another thing. If you need tutoring or something, the math lab is just right over there, right? So um, the final exam, that seems like a kind of, uh, it's a little early to talk about that, but there it is, December 8th, um, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, final exam in here would be closed book, uh, comprehensive. Um, I think you're allowed a calculator. Um, let me remove the I think. You're allowed a calculator. Um, in terms of calculators, I don't, the way I teach, I wouldn't make a problem that requires you to use a calculator necessarily. Pretty much if I'm writing a math problem, I intend for you to be able to do it without a calculator, but it's just uh, helpful to have a, like a scientific calculator at least for arithmetic help, you know, in case, you know, in case the numbers get big or something. I personally, um, have been using this thing. Uh, it's an. This is a. Uh, what's left of a uh, Angry Bird sticker? It's one of those boomerang birds. You know the one that goes, and it curves back under. You know what I'm talking about. Don't pretend you haven't played Angry Birds. You played Angry Birds. You're the right age. You know what I'm talking about. Don't trick me. All right. Anyway, this is a Casio uh, one F one fifteen ES. I like this thing. It's got some cool stuff. Like, you can go between. If I was to say put point three 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 three, and then go uh, hit the standard. Oh come on. Just a second here. One divided by six. So it'll go point one six 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 seven. Right. If I hit this uh, st a standard to decimal button, it goes back to one sixth. So that's really cool. It allows you to go back and be forth between decimal representations and um, fraction representations just with a press of a button. Sometimes that's really helpful. And also it'll do things like, suppose I wanted to take three fourths and add it to one seventh, what would you get? Three fourths plus one seventh, go. Can you guys tell me? Ooh. I was, I made my plus, a, uh, I, I, I what would three fourths plus one seventh be? How would you do that? Nineteen over twenty-eight. Well, the default here it gives me back uh, point eight nine two eight five seven one four two nine. But then I hit the S D button, and I get uh, twenty twenty-five over twenty-eight. It was close. Um, I mean, of course, you make common denominator, right? It's uh, 7 times 3 is 21, and then 4 times 1 is 4, so like 21 plus 4 is 25, 25, 28. So I don't usually do that sort of thing in my head too much. I mean, I can, but if I'm tired, I'll make a mistake, right? So it's super nice to have this for that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, I mean, we all have different uh, computers to sort of work with. I mean, some of us have better software than or hardware than others, and... So sometimes this is super helpful. But of course, you can also use a graphing calculator if you prefer. Um, I'm told that that's like the security blanket of many students. I'm 
I mean, graphing calculators used wisely can um, not be a detriment to your education. But if you think that the only way you can graph is to use a graphing calculator, I think that's a very bad thing. And that's one of the habits I'd like to help you sort of uh, free yourself of. But anyway, OK. But uh, we, I also am told the department has graphing calculators that you can use. But because of the chaos of the first week, we're waiting till the start of next week to like, hand them out. But um, Professor Giles uh, knows more about this. She's also in the math uh, help center over there. OK, um, any questions so far? So by the way, it's always OK, um, almost always OK. Um, I should have said almost. I mean, there is. Like if I'm two minutes into the explanation for something and you ask me a question about something 10 minutes ago, I'll be annoyed. <laughs> I just, it is, you know. But generally speaking, it's almost always OK to answer, ask a question. Even about stuff 10 minutes ago, just you know, breaking my train of thought is it's sometimes hard for me to get back on the train. You know? um, but I am here to help, and um, you know, questions are great. And by the way, you know, especially in a course like this, um, and really in any course, oftentimes students don't ask questions because they think, oh, I'm the only person with that question or something. Odds are very high. If you have a question, you're not the only one. You know, I do make mistakes. So, and sometimes I make them on purpose just to see if you'll say anything. Uh, that, that's always the reason. So, yeah. um, let's see here. So if you're here, you should have had a C or higher in MH101 or appropriate standardized test score. Um, this is a three credit hour class, which means we meet for 150 minutes a week. Um, ah, what? Curse you, Microsoft. I hate this view. Um, so course objectives, basically we're going to study algebra that leads, that, that's part of pre-calculus, all right? So this will overlap with like your intermediate algebra class if you had that here. There's a significant overlap, but there is new material here, right? So it's about, I don't know, I'm guessing it's about 30, 40% overlap and about 60% new, something like that, all right? Um, our textbook is Pre-Calculus Mathematics for, um, for Calculus by Stuart Redlin, Redlin and Watson. And how many authors are there on this thing? Um, the what? Only the seventh edition. Oh. The other course I'm working on uh, has the 13th edition. So this one's, it was, it was, I guess this is a youngin'. So that's this book. Now, I don't require you to have this book. It's recommended. It's not required. And um, so like I will um, suggest practice problems from here, like things that would be good to practice. I won't collect practice problems, but I would encourage you to like work some of them enough that you understand what you're doing. And if you don't understand how to get the answer to the practice problem, you should ask me about it. We can spend class time on, on how, to do, how to work it out, right? Um, so part of the reason I don't, so the actual um, homework that I'll ask you to turn in. Um, I actually want you to write it on paper to work it out, show your steps, box answer, you know, start to learn, um, you know, that, that kind of presentation of work. Uh, and I'll actually grade it. So um, I think some of the other instructors are using Cengage, uh, WebAssign. So if you're one of the, if you're in those sections, you'd need to buy access code and stuff like that. And there are advantages to it, right? If you're using WebAssign, you get instant feedback, whether you're, you're right or wrong, which is you know, kind of nice. But I find um, I don't care for it as much uh, for a lot of reasons. One, students get distracted with like, how you enter answers into the computer system, which is completely beside the point of the math. That's an annoyance to me. Um, number two, I think a lot of people, when they do electronic homework, tend to do it just like a game. Right, like I, I play uh, Naruto X Boruto. Anybody know? You know, all right. Finally, the person who knows what I'm talking about. So my, my children have been playing this and I've been playing it for about a year. And you know, the thing is, I, I play the game, right? And um, I, I once bought Shino Byte, to my shame. But um, it was for a new account, so it was cheaper. My, my children didn't figure out that I bought the Shino Byte, so I'm so kind of proud of that. I can't show them this video. Because then they'll know and then harass me to buy Shinobite. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's this game. If you play, 
you can play for hours and hours and hours and, and, and gain status, but, or you could spend 50 bucks on Shinobite and be like a god in the game. I mean, it's ridiculous. And they're always in creating new characters and such. Okay, this is not math or the course, I'll shut up. But my point about all this was, I think there's a sign coming into town to not do that, but whatever. Um, anyway, my point is, I play this game, I have never gotten a piece of paper out to write down Oh, I'm going to take this card to Neji and take this card off Tsunade and you know, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't write anything on paper. I don't present my work. I just play the game. Forget about it, right? And I think that people who do electronic homework through math might treat it like a game. Some maybe not, but there's a temptation there to treat it like a game and to not write work down. It's so important to write work down to keep a record of what you've done, to be organized, so that when something goes wrong, you can kind of look back and find out you know, what, what went wrong. Um, so, I don't require you to get an access code. There's no electronic homework. I'll actually write um, PDF homeworks up and post them, and then I'll collect them. I, I will announce due dates and hopefully have more structure there. I usually, in my typical course, I would have already written all those assignments and had them posted in Blackboard at the start. I'm just behind because I was just hired. So I'm kind of scrambling. This course should fall into place more in the next week or so. Um, now, in terms of the book, it's great if you have this. But I'm also like totally cool with you buying the uh, you know sixth edition or fifth edition or whatever. It it's pre-calculus. It hasn't changed, really, significantly. I mean, you might find different haircuts on the pretty pictures in here of the people. I don't know. They may not even change that. My point to you, you can buy an old edition for ten bucks or something, and that would probably be by. You should have some book because you want something that you can look at in addition to the notes, right? I'll, I'll write a lot of examples and a lot of things on the board in here, but there's just gonna be a better organization. There's an index, there's all kinds of resources that this offers. And I talked about WebAssign, the Cengage, the electronic homework, the instant feedback. These books also have instant feedback. All of the odd problems in this book have answers in the back, right? You don't, you don't need internet access, all you need is a pen, paper, pencil, whatever and the willpower to flip to the back of the book and see if you got the answer right. There are other ways. Um, there are actually a lot of websites now, you probably already know about, that you can check math with, right? Um, I use Wolfram Alpha a fair amount. Now, if you did all of your math with Wolfram Alpha, that could be very, that could be very bad, right? Because you, um, you wouldn't learn how to do math, right? I mean, if you're talking to somebody training for a, for a marathon, and they told, and you asked them how your training was, and they were like, well, I got a cab and went from one side of the town to the other to the other, and I, I mean, drove, you know, I, I drove 200 miles today. You probably wouldn't think that was very good training for a marathon, right? So there's a big difference between actual walking versus riding a car. They both accomplish the same purpose, to get from A to B. You can use a mathematical website to solve the problem, but it doesn't help you learn. It helps you check your answer, right? So there's, you know, there's a philosophy there that you have to be aware of. <clears throat> any, any questions? Yeah. How does it get better than, how much would it cost? Oh, that's a good question. Um, are you asking how much it costs in the bookstore? Yeah. I, $100 used? Yeah. Or rent? Rent? Now, you can get the same book on Cengage for $45 or Chig. I know a lot of folks go to Chig. Yeah, Chig. Oh, the, you say Chig? Chig. Chig, okay, yeah, yeah. Don't like that Chig. It's <laughs> fine. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, is, that, is that clear? I mean, you, you need to have a book. It's just what's best for you, right? But it doesn't have to be this edition. The, the, only, the only downside to having an old edition is you'll have to translate the homework. You might have to look at somebody with a new edition to figure out what, what problems correspond to the ones I've, I've suggested. Yeah. Need to have a book by? If you, if you have it by the start of next week, it should be fine. I mean, there should, if you need to like buy it on Amazon and it takes a week to come, it should be fine. You can look at mine in the meantime. It's cool. Yeah. The what? No, well, I will, I will be, I might. 
Um, I have like a stack of about like six pre-calculus books at home. I'll probably look at some of the other ones and pull problems directly out of there. They're all kind of the same problems. Um, uh, I might make some up, but I will actually post those and announce them. Um, and that'll be a relatively small set of problems. Like you probably need to work more than what I assigned to get really good. Um, but since I'm asking you to write them out neatly, I wouldn't assign too much, you know. Um, hopefully I won't assign too much. You can, I'm sure you'll, you might disagree with me at the end of the semester, but, you know, that's why I'll bring like cookies or pizza or something to the day we do uh, course evaluations. Actually, I'm told they're electronic, which is really no help to me. How do you, how do you ply the students? I mean, how do you be nice to the students with food and or gifts around the time of course evaluations if they're online? It's a problem. I've studied this. My colleagues at my previous institution, we have learned that if you, if you bring the students cookies at course evaluations, you can improve your statistics as a teacher significantly. Just a few dollars in cookies is an investment in your career. It's true. It's true. <clears throat> but I am here to help, guys. Seriously, no, no joking. I, I really do care what you think. And if you need something, have a question about anything, um, you know, don't hesitate to send me an email or raise your hand. Excellent. Yes. No, oh, the exam is not online. The exam will be here um, in person. But there's a caveat. <laughs> so let's get to it. <laughs> there is a, a uh, so here's the thing. Oh, God, this mouse is possessed. Um, so we're going to do these, these algebra things. All right, let me, oh, ah, yeah, yeah, I, I tell you. Let's, let's try something else. Um, Come on. No, I don't want this view. I want like, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I want a PDF. That's a very good answer. Is that what you said? Or did I just hear what I wanted to? Come on. Uh, no. I can't win for losing. There we go. Ah. Finally. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. So here's the, here's the way I have um, allocated the points. So uh, at the moment, for lack of imagination, I'm using the same kind of grading scale I was forced to use at my previous institution. There's always a thousand points in every course. And um, like, if you have 900 to 1,000, you have an A. And I say you have an A, but what I should say is you earn an A, right? The grade you get in here is not a grade I give you, it's a grade you earn. So, um, of that 1,000 points, I've made 150 points for homework, um, 100 points for quizzes, um, 50 points for participation, uh, 450 points for tests, and 250 points for that final exam. Now, the test, there's going to be three tests in here. Um, some of the other sections will have four tests, I think, but I, I think three is, is, is enough. And the reason I want for three tests in here is because I always have a quiz that, that takes up like part of a day before the test. Um, now the awkward thing for me, and this is not best, but it's just what has happened to us because I'm also teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I want your tests to be the same length as them so I can kind of, you know, be fair to both sections. Um, and what that means is on the test day, I either need to lecture after or before the test. I suggest that I lecture after the test um, so that I don't distract you with new material before the test. I think it's just better for you if I lecture after the test. But we can talk about it. I mean, we can take a poll or something. Yeah, when we get closer. You, if you guys want me to do it the other way, I can do it the other way. Right? So, but you'll have something like an hour for the test, 50 minutes to an hour, something like that, um, depending on how much time I can get for the other class. Um, and, and the test, I will make the appropriate length you know, for that. Um, I guess the only thing is if you're really fast, like some of you probably actually don't need to be here. Maybe you should be in a higher class. I don't, I don't know. I haven't taught here before. I don't know how um, accurate our placement system is, you know? So. Um, it is possible that you might finish the test really fast and then kind of be bored and sitting there. 
So that, that might be a good reason to put the lecture at before the test so when people are done they can leave, right? I don't know. Um, participation is very simple. Um, I ask that you guys help me with the camera. So we'll like rotate through that. Different people do it different days, yeah? Um, also participation is, some, I'm, what, I'm, um, what I'll do is uh, and I'll have a stack of three by five cards with your names on them. So I can like just go through and pick, it, pick one at random and then ask you a question, right? And it's, it's not like I ask you a question, you don't answer it. I'm like, oh, you don't get your point. The fact that you're here and could participate is enough to get credit for that, right? And if you don't answer it, um, it's just, it's, you know, it's meant to be very low stress. I'll go on to the next person or, you know, whatever. Um, we're all here to learn. None of us are perfect, me included. And, um, you know, there's no shame in giving a wrong answer, right? We have to, we have to give wrong answers and find out they're wrong in order to become right, right? That's, that's learning. Um, of course, if you get the right answer to start with, that's, that's also not bad. But um, if everybody got the right answer all the time, then I wouldn't need to be here. So. <laughs> um, quizzes. There are not that many quizzes. There's like a quiz before the test. I don't just give pop quizzes in here. Right, so I, I, will, I will soon look at the course planner. I will basically tell you when the quiz is going to be. My quiz, give or take, is a pretest. Um, it's not worth... It's worth less points than the test. Like the quizzes, I think, are worth 25 points, if I remember right. Um, there will be time pressure on the quiz. Like it's, it's, in some sense, unfair. I want it to be unfair. I want you to um, suffer in the quiz, in the sense that I want you to find out what you don't know how to do in a reasonable amount of time in the quiz, so that in the day or two or three, however many it is before the test, you have a chance to focus on what it is that you're still like struggling with. So the purpose of the quiz, in part, is to avoid disaster on the test. This is why I give quizzes before test. Homework also helps with that, right? If you do your homework and you're not just using your calculator or, you know, what was that website you talked about? Check, Chegg? Or, or Course Hero or Quizlet or any of the other ones. Actually, those won't help you because I'm writing the homework. It, it's, it's, the point is, the homework is to help you, right? So if you like go around me and like have a tutor do the homework or something, it's just it's just not um, you're just hurting yourself, you know. I mean, I, I'm not really the homework. By the way, you can work together on the homework. I, it's not like I um, I, w I always say this: um, you can copy ideas, just don't copy steps. Does that make sense? Like if if you worked out the homework, somebody asks you how you did it, you can you tell them in words, just don't let them just wrote copy your paper because that that hurts them right um, so if I if I see homeworks that are just literally copied I will probably like do something I'm not sure how cheating and stuff is handled here but I'll find out hopefully that doesn't happen um, I mean my usual first thing would be if I get the same homework from two people then I figure I should just divide the points in two and give half to one student and half to the other since I only got one homework from two people, you know, like that, that's a good starting point. But I don't even want to talk about this. You guys aren't going to do this. And because, like I said, you're free to talk uh, amongst yourselves about the homework. You're free to talk to me about the homework. You can email me about the homework. There's really no reason everybody can't have 100% on my homework. All right. Um, oh, and here I've used some inequalities because I'm a nerd. Um, so if x is greater than or equal to 900, you have an a. Um, for 800 to 899b, for 700 to 799c, for 600 to 699d, and then, actually, I don't even know why I'm talking about d. Everyone, or c, like everyone in here, is going to be this or that, right? It's, it's, yeah, 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 so that's what you will earn. I'm going to start wearing a t-shirt to class in here. This long sleeve, long sleeve shirt in this in this weather classroom weather is not working for me. Um, here's a list of uh, content things we'll talk about. Um, some of you um, might be athletes. You might have other university approved events. Um, you know, there's many things that might be a legitimate reason to miss a test. The important thing is to communicate with me. Let me know that that's going to happen so we can find a good solution, right? 
So um, if possible, I'll try to let you take the test at an alternate time, right? Um, but if that, if that doesn't work out and doesn't work out and doesn't work out, what we, we might do is just add weight to your final. I, I try not to do that because it's better for you to have the test. Like, you learn things taking the test. A person's in a much better situation to have taken that test and then take the final as opposed to like wait to the final to find out if you know it. Um, so we, we try not, I try not to push things to the final that much, but we can always do that if we need to. Um, but again, I'll try to find a way to make up the test for you. Attendance, absence policy. Um, this I have just copied, like I have this syllabus for the most part I've copied from another instructor and um, they're much more serious about attendance than I am. I think it's very important for you to attend class, don't get me wrong, but I think you're also adults and you have things that you have to do. So if you need to miss class, like it's okay, just don't make a habit of it, right? I will try to take attendance because I know that the chairperson wants statistics for attendance, so I better take attendance. Um, I don't know what's the best way to do that, I'll be figuring that out. Definitely I don't want to read the names at the start of every class because that eats up an inordinate amount of time, you know? Um, so maybe we can, I'll, I'll figure something out. We usually just pass a roll around, but that seems to be, uh, you know, frowned upon at the moment, right? With the virus and all. Um, let's see here. Any questions? So uh, I try to bring my, uh, my camcorder to class every day and I make a point of recording um, the lectures. I try to post them on YouTube soon after, as soon as I can. And um, a couple of reasons I do that. Um, one is just because sometimes people are sick or, you know, you have to go to your cousin's wedding in another state or whatever, you miss class. It's nice to be able to watch the video of what happened. It's also nice for me because I can go back and see what I actually said last week. And sometimes I forget. So the, vi the video is helpful for me for that reason. Um, but I will say, um, if you don't want the back of your head to be shown to the world, you know, keep in mind where you sit. Is that a concern for anyone? Are you okay? Okay. I don't know. I've never really, I mean, we always, there's always these discussions about student permission for taking videos in class, but I've yet to meet a student who actually cares about the back of their head being filmed. So, um, let's see here. So, I do try to lecture. Now, I will say this. Um, if, you're, if you end up having to quarantine or something and you really need me to live stream the class, there might be a way I'm able to videotape and live stream at the same time, but I'm trying not to do that because it adds a technical level of complication to my teaching, which I just, I don't, I don't want to do it if I don't have to. Um, and the other thing is, if you're doing quarantine and I'm videotaping the classes, then I would just expect you to watch them sometime in the next day. And then you would email me, Professor, I've watched the video, and then that would count for attendance. Right? Now, I say that, but you're like, well, what if you don't attend? What happens to my grade? The answer is nothing. I don't have part of your grade being attendance. I do have participation, so that, that could hurt you. Like, if you chronically, if you never come to class, right, you pretty much can never earn participation points. See how that works? But, so that, that's kind of a pretend, a, attendance points, but it's not direct attendance. Like some other classes, if you miss beyond a certain number of, point, number of classes, you're going to lose points on your grade, right? Um, I'm not enforcing such a policy at the moment. I hope that's okay. No one's told me otherwise. <laughs> so, don't ask, don't tell. Um, I should have not recorded this. Oops. Um, <clears throat> There is an assessment day that I wonder if I have included in my course planner. We'll find out, but that is on a Tuesday, I think, so this is relevant to us. Eh. Well, something to think about. Um, October 13th, all right. Do I have class on that day? <laughs> uh, note to self. <laughs> October 13th. Not class day. Fix. 
So I will be I will be updating the course planner. I hope that doesn't have a horrible cascading effect to mess up my test dates and such. I don't think it will, but we'll see. This ability, if you have um, had testing accommodations in high school for some kind of learning disability, or whatever, obviously don't tell me right now, but you there's an official process for going through that. I don't know, I'm just here now, right? But I think you have to go through the counseling center and get some official documentation. Make sure you get that done and notify me about it before the test. Um, you know, and uh, I, I, I try to work with students to get them extra time in more or less the same situation as the students taking the test. Like I have found that students are usually grateful to be able to have like double time in the same more or less physical space as people taking the test as opposed to a testing center. There are a lot of reasons for that. Um, one of the big ones is if I make a mistake on the like writing of the test or something, as I sometimes do, if you're taking the test the same place as the other people, that gives me a chance to say, hey, this. Or if I give a hint to the class or something like that, then if you're close to where the class is taking the test, then I can share the hint with you. Whereas if you're in the testing center, if we have that, I think we have that sort of thing here probably. Um, it's much harder for me to um, share other things that I might have shared with the class if you're over there. Um, but of course, if that's what you need, if it's you know, something about that particular thing, uh, testing center, you need to be there, then that, that's fine. But I'm here to work with you, and I do accommodate um, disabilities as, as, as we should. Um, honesty, integrity. So I will try not to lie to you. You try not to lie to me. We're all happy, right? Ah, what's this? Sorry. I'm easily distracted, especially by fruit flies in class. Let's see here. Um, COVID-19, um, I'm against it. So, um, no, I mean, yes, we, we must mind the COVID-19. Um, by now you've had how many classes? Four? This is your fourth class? Third class? What is it? Your fifth class? Third class? How many times have you heard this already? A bunch, right? So we've all heard this already. I will summarize. Don't be an idiot. You know, um, if you're sick, stay home. I think this was good advice long before this virus appeared. <laughs> you know, um, I told my other class when I was in school, I was taking a class called uh, General Relativity um, from, a, from a Russian professor who was a, uh, oh man, that guy was just brilliant. But he's just a little guy, he smoked like two packs a day. But he had the flu, I'm pretty sure. And we were in a classroom that was like, maybe a quarter to the size of this room. I mean, it was small, right? He's up at the front, like sweat is dripping off his nose, just drip, drip, drip. And when he coughs, you feel like he's going to die. You know, it's just like that, just kind of like, oh man, I'm glad I'm not coughing like that kind of cough. And, and we're just like, we could, we could take a day off. We don't have to be here. It's okay. He's like, no, it must go on, you know. I've, I've already prepared this, you know, he's, he's dead, and it's just like, all right, <laughs> I love general relativity, I don't care, if I get the flu, so be it, you know, so, and, and fortunately I did not get sick, but, um, you know, it would have always been, um, it would have been wiser, I mean, this is 25 years ago, but, um, was it that long, maybe 20 years, I don't know, but, um, if you're sick, stay home, if I'm sick, I will also stay home, but that doesn't mean class is canceled. Probably what it means is I will tape lectures and post them and let you guys follow along like that, most likely. Uh, I'm teaching some students in China right now. That's what I'm doing for them, you know. Uh, we have Zoom meetings every week and I, I post lectures for them and I'll write homeworks for them and grade them and such. And that is what it might come to in here too if things go sideways, right? So I should talk about that. What's that? <laughs> I would rather not. You know, a lot of people seem to think it's going to happen. Um, wash your hands. Wear masks coming and going. Try to social distance. If, um, you know, if I forget to do something, just let me know. I will try to, um, you know, maintain proper social distancing and such. Um, so if the university suspends in-person cl in class meetings and we begin online instruction, then you should expect to complete tests and quizzes 
at, so I, I said that, um, so I'm, I'm likely to record lectures, so you could do those, you could like watch those anytime, right? Within reason. Um, but I do always want our tests, at least our tests, to be, I mean the quizzes I could probably, those are like small, smaller points, I can probably not insist on doing those through Zoom. If, if, if this happens, but the tests definitely need to happen like on the uh, before agreed to date and time. So if you get a job or something, <laughs> I'm, I'm told that last time things went online and students got jobs and like, you're like, I need to, uh, other instructors told me like, I need you to go to the test and they'd be like, well, I, I got I'm working at that time. It's like, yeah, I mean, but I understand why students, you need money, right? I mean, it's understandable. I mean, I'm, I think it's great that the student got a job personally, but um, I also understand the frustration of the instructor, right? We need a common time where we can do tests. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll just basically use Zoom to proctor the test if that happens. Hopefully this doesn't happen. I'll talk more about the details of it if it happens, but let's just, let's pray it doesn't happen, right? Um, finally, I am a benevolent dictator. I reserve the right to um, change this course, but if I make those changes, they will be to help you, not to hurt you, right? So. Um, I almost never actually have to exercise that last clause in my, my syllabus, but there it is. Any questions? The thing I talked about but haven't showed you yet, which is important, by the way, I've posted the syllabus, the course planner, and also my schedule in course content before class today, so you can, you can find them there, all right? Um, I'll also make a folder that's like homework and homework solutions, so what will happen as soon as I get a chance to sit down and write it is I will post a PDF with your like first homework and I'll tell you when it's due. And so when it's due, I'll collect it. And soon after that, I will post the solution. And because I do that, once I post the solution, I'm not taking further like submissions, right? So it's important to turn the homework pretty much on time because I don't like to wait long to communicate the solution to the class, right? So now if people are sick and you got other stuff going on, just let me know, we can work around it, all right? But normal order of operations, you wanna turn the homework in on time, and I wanna post a solution there soon thereafter. So if somebody drags their feet on turning the homework in, it could make me, in some situations, like delay posting a solution for the class, and that just, that makes me grumpy. Don't, <laughs> don't do that, please. Um, but do do your homework. Like there's, um, you, got, you got to do the homework. Doing the homework is doing the course. There's really no more important thing in a math class than spending quality time on the homework. Somewhere in here, I've got a uh, pl course planner. I'm not seeing it. It's right in front of me, but there it is. Um, I need to make a PDF of this. I, I hate opening things in Word on the computers. I, I'll try to post a PDF of this when I get a second. I think I posted it as a Word document at the moment. I'll leave it like that just so you can edit it if you want. Like, um, you know, in a perfect world, I would have already found about six hours to sit and stare at your textbook, and I would have picked out recommended homework and put them in here. But, you know, I'm scrambling to prepare the course right now, a little bit behind where I usually am. But you can write them in there for now, right? Um, so where are we? Um, today, I'm supposed to talk about real numbers, exponents, radicals, and algebraic expressions. So I better, I better get to it pretty soon, right? Um, <clears throat> and then, so this, this basically gives you my, um, my tentative plan for what we're gonna be covering those days. And so you can kind of expect that the homework is gonna echo those things. And I usually like to assign homework on things that I haven't covered, in, that I've already covered in lecture, ideally. Sometimes the homework might cover things I'm about to cover in lecture, but it's usually more or less on point. Um, let's see here. So you see, do, 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 we get the quiz one down here, which I think is the 8th of September. And so we have quiz one, like the start of class, then I'll collect them, and we have review one. In the review one, what am I going to do? I'm probably going to talk about the solution to the quiz you just took. It might sting a little, right? But it's, it's good because you hopefully will get feedback and find out what it is that you need to fix or, you know, maybe everything will be great, who knows. And then we'll have test one. Um, let's see here, this is the eighth. That's the, is it the 10th? Eight, 
I think it's the 10th. So I think September 10th, if I've, if I've counted correctly, would be like test one. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty dogmatic about sticking to these schedules, right? Now, not everybody does that. Different people teach different ways. A lot of people kind of teach according to the, how the flow of the class goes. But I, I personally like to set a schedule and like just try to stick to it, all right? So, um, um, and then our test two is down here. As you can see, I have a quiz two and review right before it, right? Um, and there should be homework due about every week, maybe twice a week sometimes, about like that. About every, I don't know, probably about every four days or so, there should be homework due, four to five days, something like that in here. Um, test three is, you know, it sort of, and oh, okay, what is ex assessment day? It is October 13th. Ah, see, so I'll just basically shift this stuff down. It'll be fine. I don't think I need to, well, let me think about that. I may need to shift this part of the course because of the assessment day issue. I'll get back to you on that later today, probably, about that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. That's super helpful to know that now as opposed to a week before. <laughs> uh, and then, okay, so after test three, we're going to cover um, logarithms and exponentials, um, which is, you know, a super important example, both for science and for calculus. You know, it's really interesting functions and properties and such. But um, I, couldn't, I couldn't see a way to squeeze a test four in. Like if I put test four in, I'm going to give you test four like right before the final. And then I'm going to test you on it again in the final. And I just don't see the point. Um, I, I think I'd rather have you have time to try to absorb the material as best as you can and then be tested on the exponentials and logs in, in the final exam. But there's also quiz four. So you will have some in-class time pressure experience with logs and exponentials before the final, right? So that, that's my plan for the course. Any, any questions? Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll try to get those three by five cards and start, you know, keeping track of who's done the camera and who's answered my silly question in class. And basically what happens is at the end of the semester, I flip through the cards and I try to see like, okay, almost all of the students have at least three marks on the card, right? And then what I'll do is I'll be like, okay, so three cards is 50, three, three marks is 50 points. And people who have four marks, it's like 55 points. People who have, you know, five, five marks is like 60 points or something. So I'll give bonus points for people who are above the average. And I try to give the majority of the students who've made a good faith effort to be here and to participate, like the full 50 points of participation. Um, so certainly, like, as a general point of order, in my grading, I, I do allow bonus points. So like, you can earn more than, it's possible that you might earn more than 50 points for participation the way I, I score things. Same is true for tests and homework. I will probably have some harder problems that are like bonus. Um, it may not happen. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see. But I, I usually have, in, in all my other courses that I've ever taught, I've always had some bonus points. So it's possible to actually earn more than 1,000 points. I've had students who are, um, you know, sort of so beyond the curve of other students that they've had like 1,200 points where everybody else has had 1,000. That happens, you know. Um, um, so, but uh, my, my point is, is just that, um, you know, I, I rarely fail people who actually do the work for a class. You know, it's pretty rare for me to see the need to not pass somebody who's actually done the work for the class. Now, if you take all the tests and, you know, you make a C, right, but then you don't do the homework and your participation's like a little bit low, and you've missed a quiz, well, all of a sudden that 70% that you have on the test has just become a D, right? Because, you know, these other things do, do average out. Um, but I, I don't want to talk about that. Y'all are going to earn A's and B's, so what's the point of talking about that? All right, so with that, let's get to the math. Let me shut this thing down. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh. That was dumb. I was trying to turn it back on, and I did the one thing to turn it off, right? Which is to hit the button twice in a row. <laughs> I wanted to show you something before I went.
to the mouth. And I'm very happy to hear the sound of notebooks opening. That is important. Like we should all take notes in class. Um, I say that, but I'm not. Uh, but I also would follow that with. There is a small subset of students who do better to like just sit and listen and then write things down later. Those students exist and I think that's one of the things that videotaping classes is especially helpful for. So it's not going to happen, is it? Sorry about that. Hey, we're doing way better than the other pre-calculus class. The other pre-calculus, um, I couldn't get the smart board to project anything, so we had to like just talk about the syllabus without looking at it. That was miserable. This is the um, story which will be, oh, so I think I sent, did I send a link to the class yet for the YouTube playlist? I don't think I have. I should make an announcement with that. And um, also, I haven't updated it yet, but I do keep a personal web page which has, which will have like, I like to keep a course web page which has things like the homeworks I'm assigning to you and some other stuff. Blackboard has everything you need, but I, I try to like keep a record of what I've done in courses on my, my web page just for like my, my future reference and so forth. And the other, um, other thing on my web page is you can see a little bit more about like my own personal mathematical research and um, students I've worked with in the past. Um, I, I used I was previously employed at Liberty University. I worked there for about 11 years as a math professor. Last year I went and uh, started work for the Navy as a scientist. Um, and then since March I've been just sitting at home teleworking. But you know, there was a time I went to like a base and went through security and all that kind of fancy stuff. Um, but I'm so happy to be back to teaching. There's really nothing I'd rather be doing. Um, but I thought it would be fun to show you some pictures of my kids before I forgot. So this is, um, this is Benjamin. He's currently three. He's very proud of this, I think. Um, <laughs> let's see here. This is Daniel. These are pictures a little bit older. He's, he's 12 now, he's a little bit bigger than that, but uh, he, he feels like I do about having his picture taken, as you can see. He would be very annoyed that I was sharing this with you right now. So that's why I do. This is my wife, um, Jenny, and um, my daughter, Hannah. Here's all of them. That's Benjamin, Daniel, Isaac, uh, Hannah, and Matthew. As you can see, Isaac is uh, Isaac. Is Isaac. The kid is hilarious. Um, this is how Matthew um, makes his math work. He's, he's using his, like, He's focusing. He's, so I, I forget exactly what he calls this, but this makes the math happen. Um, I don't know why, but I love this picture. It's just hilarious to me. I, <laughs> let's see here. Um, these are some older pictures. Oh, I'll explain this one, this picture here. This picture, where we used to live, we, uh, we went to a pool, and they had soda there. And I told him, no, I will not buy you a soda. And then he gave me this face for an extended period of time. He was not, not at all happy about it. That, that, right here, don't do this in your life. Do not buy this. It's a piano. It's an upright piano. Say no. No. No to owning upright pianos until you're in your permanent home. Once you know you're in your permanent home, then, and only then, will you buy an upright piano. So yes, it's heavy. It's 500 pounds. 500 pounds of nonsense. I had to hire three football players to move that thing. And they were suffering. 
I said they should have paid me because I was giving them training, but they did, they disagreed. So, yeah, and I'm going to have to move it again because we're currently in a rental house in Tuscaloosa. Um, don't really recommend. I, there are professors here who live in Tuscaloosa on purpose. I don't know why though. It's an hour. You know. I mean, there are good restaurants up there, I suppose, but I don't know. Ah, yes. Disney World sword fight. Um, you can't find this at Disney World anymore. This is the old Honey, I Shrunk the Kids playground. They have, I don't know, it's part of Star Wars whatever land now. You can go, go wait in line two hours for their new Star Wars ride, or you could do this ten years ago. <clears throat> That's six weeks of my summer where we used to live in, in Lynchburg, Virginia one summer. I took six weeks and I built a castle. So, and then we sold the house and the condition that the person who bought our house put on the house was that the castle be removed. I just got done restaining it. It was so sad. Fortunately, my realtor wanted it for his family, so they cut it off. Oh, it's, it's in concrete. Um, and like, I, I dug down 18 inches and poured like 500 pounds of concrete in there to hold it in place. Um, if there was a tornado, that would be the place to go. But um, Yeah, so they cut it off and moved it to his house. So it's, it lives on at someone else's house. Isaac has always been Isaac. Let's see here. This is mid the medieval, medieval times. Have you ever been to medieval times? It's an experience. It is. It's like uh, if you if you get into a, like a lot of bar fights for some reason, and you're looking for a job, you think where should I work? Medieval times. I think it's like it's like that professionally. They just like fake fighting with each other and riding horses and stuff. At some point, a falcon appears. I have it right again. Oh, and this is a. Uh, I think it's a part of a helix. All right. Anyway, I will stop that and uh, get this math. Let me put this away. Um, later, guys. Once I have a chance to um, update my website, um, I'll show you. Let me just show you like an old one. What I try to do. Oh, here's like this is college algebra that I taught ages ago, which in this course is kind of roughly that course. Not quite. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, it's hard to compare exactly. But, um, you know, I have, ooh, I do have old notes here, don't I? You know, I've forgotten about these until just now. <gasps> I should use these. I should definitely use these. Why am I not using these in here? What, what is it? What's that? What about my note? What, what, what about them? Oh, well, thank you. I took a, my handwriting was horrible until I took drafting in high school, and then I started writing everything in block caps. Like it fixed me. Um, actually, these are actually the things I should talk about today, partly. But I, I, I you know, I hate just looking at something and, uh, um, you know. Uh, I think it's important to write things out and talk about them as we write them. So, oh, ah, all right. So I'm gonna put this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up. I will. Go back to your home. Go to your home. Come on. Aha. All right. All right. Hey, I'm just grateful that this thing is controlled by a string. Where I used to work, um, one semester they came in and they put electronic ones. Fancy, these things are like a thousand dollars a piece or whatever, right? Recessed up in the, and there, it's like some central control. You press the button, they go. There's none of the string stuff, you know? But the thing is, since they're run through IT, they could be remotely accessed. And like I had one classroom, and it, it, without, without fail, like 20 minutes into class, the board comes down. like halfway, and then goes back up a quarter, then comes down to half, and then goes back up again. It happened like every class. I don't know, like somebody, somebody made a coding error, 
And so you're like at the, at the mercy of, uh, of, of incompetent IT to have uh, you know, boards randomly come down in your class. Or the other fun one, I went once to class and the lights had been turned off because the person before me was showing a video. A whole room. I really do mean to wear the mask when I'm going back there, but as I warned you, I will get excited. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, there was a point to that story. So I come in the class, I'm trying to teach physics to like 60 people, right? I have a master's in physics, so I teach some physics also. Not here at the moment, but... Um, um, the lights are off. I'm like, there's no light switch. Like the lights are turned on by like a central podium. I'm like pressing the button, it won't work. The IT department has turned off the lights in the classroom for the previous instructor. It hadn't occurred to them, there's a class after that class where they're not watching a video, they don't need the lights off. So I'm like, how am I supposed to teach a class with the lights off? So what do you do? What do you do in this situation? Do what? Can you say cancel class? Clap twice. Clap, clap twice. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great answer. Um, no, I just I went back to my office. I got like little 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 bullet lamps. It's so sad. I'm like mood lighting in the front. It's horrible. Anyway, all right. So let's talk about number systems. And uh, terminology. We'll start there. Uh, let me, um, before I get too carried away here. So we have until when? Oh man, how have I talked about the syllabus for that long? I am so sorry, guys. Um, okay, so the real numbers are generally, um, most of the time, what we're working with, right? So th this is a, a notation for the real numbers. An interval notation looks like this, right? This is the real numbers an interval notation. Um, now, we also have a picture for these, right? What's our picture? What's our picture for the real numbers? It's kind of silly. I mean, don't think about it much, but just a line, right? So there you go. I mean, that's the, the number line is another way we can visualize the real numbers, right? There are one-to-one -one correspondence between points on the number line and this real number, the set of real numbers. The other thing we can think about is something like a closed interval. Right, A to B. This is the closed interval from A to B. And um, I can write that using what's called set builder notation as follows. So this is X in the real numbers such that A is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to B. Now let me just try to break that down a um, little bit. So this funny looking symbol right here, you may not have seen before, that means is, is an element, is an element of. So that just means X is an element of the real numbers. It's, it's something, it's a point inside that set. Um, this vertical bar here is basically just meaning such that. Right? So the way this notation works, you put sort of the universe um, of things that you're taking, uh, where, where you're taking the elements from, in this case, x from the real numbers on the left of the bar, and then to the right of the bar, you put conditions which describe the set. This is set builder notation. Um, on the other hand, this over here, um, This over here, this guy, this is what's called interval notation. So if I ask you for an answer in interval notation, that means you should use this particular notation, right? The thing to the right of it, that's not interval notation. That's, that's uh, set builder or sometimes called roster notation. 